hi everybody and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Now if you watch the channel, generally you'll notice we are always testing expensive trucks, top trim models with all of the features. The truth is, we don't get to pick the trucks we test, manufacturers provide them to us and generally they like us to show off their best stuff. But today we've got a treat for you because Ram has come through with a 1500 Tradesman. This is a base model truck and we're going to put it to the test. So in this video, we're going to hook up a trailer, we're going to haul payload and then we're just going to crawl all over this truck and see what Ram offers in its most inexpensive model. Starting with the walk around, we've got to talk about the engine. So this is a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter V6 that makes 305 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque hooked up to an 8-speed automatic transmission. And there's one other thing at play here, that is e-torque. That is the 48 volt mild hybrid system and every single one of these 3.6 engines now gets e-torque. So whether you want it or not, you're getting it. So let's take a look at the front end of this truck. This is the Tradesman, but it has the SXT appearance package, which is why you're getting all the chrome. Now, if you're gonna ask me personally, I think a work truck should not have this much chrome. I wouldn't have picked all of this stuff. However, Ram, you know, it seems in every single case goes out of their way to make their trucks look more expensive. They offer you packages that even on their base trucks, you can make them look really nice. So keep on rolling around to the sides here. And we do have an upgraded set of 18 inch wheels. Once again, that comes with the SXT package, a little bit more styling. But besides that, I mean, this truck is very basic, very plain. We do have the optional towing mirrors, which are honestly a great addition to a truck like this. And moving around to the back, you'll see that this is just a quad cab, not the crew cab here. That's gonna save you a few bucks. But we do have the six and a half foot bed or six foot four. And uh, on a work truck, you definitely want the longer bed. This is not the kind of truck you're gonna see as a crew cab short bed like we do with a lot of the expensive trucks. This is the setup you want. Now finally, looking at the actual bed here, no damped tailgate, not surprising considering the price point, but we do have a spray in bed liner here and that's so important. That is optional, but it's very inexpensive. And uh, even on your basic trucks, you're getting some nice features like that. Plus LED lights in your bed and you can even reach in and turn them on with a button. So call it a base truck if you want, but this thing really does have a lot of smart features on it. Now you must be asking, what does it cost? Well, let's cover the price because that's really important here on this truck. So it's listed there as an SXT, but that's because the SXT package is added. You'll see right there, it's a Tradesman quad cab 4x4 with a base price of 47,595. And here's the standard equipment. You really do not get a lot of standard options on this truck. Moving over here to our optional equipment, we actually have $10,000 worth of option on the truck you see today. There's the SXT appearance group. That's giving you the chrome bumpers in the front and the rear too. Honestly, on a work truck, I could lose the chrome bumpers, but whatever. Here's the rest of the options. Bringing our total price to $56,250 Canadian. And before you lose your mind saying, that's really expensive for a work truck, let me turn it over to a dad for a bit more of an in-depth explanation. You know, it occurs to me, like Steve mentioned right off the top, that we normally get the top trim trucks to test. However, this truck came from the fleet buyers. And this is the kind of thing that they run out to somebody who's buying 10, 20, 100 trucks at a time. But even this one has got a ton of extra features on it. That's because a fleet manager does it in reverse. He wants to see a truck that's got everything on it. And then he goes, no, take that off, take that off. We're not buying that. We don't want this. However, leave that, that, that. So that's how this particular truck works. But more importantly than that, MSRP. I just want to talk real quick about MSRP. Manufacturers suggested retail price. The word you want to concentrate on is suggested. It's not necessarily a price that's based in fact. It's what they suggest. And what, of course, everybody knows is nobody pays MSRP. However, I've been doing this for 30 years, and the rule in the industry, the journalist 
code is you only quote MSRP. It's just the way it goes. And even in this video, we'll probably be showing commercials where there'll be advertising 10,000 off, 15,000 off. So let's not get too hung up on MSRP. What it is, is just a place to start and realizing, of course, that when you do get to your dealer, it's going to be cheaper. So the sticker on this truck is 57. You figure somebody's probably buying it for what, 45? Well, the base price is 47. That's again, MSRP. So. I'd knock at least seven or eight out of that. Mm. And then you can add a few things to it. You probably walk away with this truck with some options for 40 grand. But to your point, the reason we don't mention it is because we don't know for sure and we don't want to mislead people. So that, now you kind of know, but we also know, yeah, no one's paying that full pop. Absolutely, and every dealer's got a different deal. So it just gets way too far into the weeds that's why we stick with MSRP, but don't get hung up on that number. It's just somewhere to start. And now we got to check the payload on the Ram. We look at the door jam sticker and we're talking about 1,687 pounds. Okay, we're on the road. We've got the thousand pound of bricks back there in the bed and payload on this truck like you saw, 1600 and change. With us up here, um, no, we're not over the payload rating for a change. We probably have a little bit left over. We um, can eat lunch. Yes, <laughs> we're close to it, but not over. Um, and you know what? It's handling the weight really, really well. Uh, from the passenger seat, it seems to me like this is one of those trucks that you could probably push her a little harder than this. And the one big difference, especially at the base level, is the Ram, of course, has coil springs back there, the five link coil spring rear suspension rather than the leaf springs and uh, you know this truck rides really really nice but what are you feeling ditto for everything you said uh, I've said it before with some trucks that thousand pounds uh, it's not stressing this truck at all Another area we need to focus on right now is this interior because again when you're you know buying a truck right at the base level a lot of the stuff you're giving up are, is interior appointments and technology um, but that said the tradesman is really nicely appointed you still get this small touch screen up here in the center stack you still have satellite radio connectivity Bluetooth connectivity no navigation system but that's to be expected uh, one of the things I really like is your info screen up there in between your gauges it often offers the exact same information that you're gonna get out of the bigger screen. We've recently had a bunch of FCA vehicles, and so I know exactly what's in there, and this little screen gives you the same info. So sure, it's smaller, but it's the same information, and I think that's key. Uh, buying this Ram, I don't know, it doesn't feel like you're giving up that much. Again, what do you think about all the, the gear in here? The only thing you notice when you first get in is that five inch screen. Sure. That's what tells you that you're in tradesman. Past that, uh, switches, dials, the layout, uh, the HVAC is pretty much the same through all the trim levels. So it's not like you're not getting what the other trucks have. It's just that everything is basically simple. It's, I was going to say dumbed down, but it's not dumbed down. It's actually, it's, uh, it's filtered down to exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff that you would option out on higher priced trucks it's not here and quite honestly as a work truck you don't need any of that stuff on the flip side of that I haven't noticed anything that I'm missing mm -hmm. and that's really key for me because I've been driving it for two days now picking up ATVs and stuff and hauling a trailer and I have yet to find where oh I don't have that thing yeah it's all here yeah intruding including a trailer brake controller you know even on the base truck you're getting that brake controller so it's ready to work uh, one thing I'll point out to you it's not winter time yet no heated seats in this truck and you didn't notice because it's not cold enough yet. <laughs> that, that's true I miss the heated steering wheel uh, sorry guys when you get old like me bad circulation in the hands that's the one thing that I would still like to have but hey listen uh, I suppose gloves will have to do <laughs> 
and again in a work truck you tend to scatter your stuff all over the place but there's a lot of cubbies and nooks and crannies and storage yeah but you're right I, I really like this little storage cubby in front of the passenger here too easy to toss stuff in you're getting a 115 uh, outlet right up front here too three prong and you're getting USB ports you know it's a base truck but you still got the plug-ins so yeah so far I, the biggest takeaway we're coming away with is I just don't feel like we're missing a whole lot and that brings us down to the fact that with a lot of these trucks and this is what a lot of guys tend to do instead of going into those higher packages start with more of the base truck and then put on the options you want just the options you want because that's one thing with packages sometimes you end up with stuff that you're kind of like yeah I could have cared less if I had it but you paid for it this is sometimes a better way to, to build out a truck now we can measure the squat here on our Ram so we can go to the center of the wheel bring it up and we're looking at center it a little better there uh, 37 and a quarter that's 37 and one quarter inches now we'll peel the barrel off and we'll compare the squat okay unloaded so now we can remeasure and let's see what we're talking about here with a thousand pounds so we are at 37 and a quarter Man, this is getting too easy. That's 39 and a quarter. This truck was squatting exactly two inches, and now you can see how that stacks up. All right, everybody, we're gonna back into our trailer now. Let me get you a shot that's not so sunny, jeez. So you can see you got the backup camera on the five inch screen. And let me say right now about FCA cameras, some of the highest quality cameras on the market. I don't know, I always notice that the resolution on FCA's is so crystal clear compared to some other brands. Cough, Honda, cough. Um, so this is the only view you get in this truck, but you do have that zoom in view too. So once dad gets close enough to the trailer here, you're able to hit that zoom button. There you go. A little far out still. But yes, a nice close zoom. So then you're able to drop that hitch right underneath that pin. Like that. Kaboom. Okay, folks, we're just hooking up the trailer. And I want to show you something I don't normally show you, but here on the Ram, it's weird. Those are the safety chain connections. Now, for 2019, they were redesigned into this big, thick, boxy shape as compared to the simple loops they had before. And I do not understand the advantage of this. There's a hole in the front, underneath, and in the back. So if I try to go in the back, sometimes you can't even find it. It's at a weird angle. That's not gonna work. Then you can come up from the bottom and go like this, and that works. But look, this chain should be allowed to hang down loose, but the actual opening here is too skinny. This is too thick, so it hangs like that. It just it makes no sense to me why Ram redesigned these and if someone can see an advantage I would like to hear it because I think it was much better before 2019. Okay everybody we're trying our 0 to 60 here. We're set up 5,000 pounds on the trailer. Let's wait for the app to reset and go. Hit it. Oh little chirp off the line. Traction control tipped in though. It's worth mentioning it is a little wet out here today. Scooting right along though. Yeah, it feels okay. And you should be there. A hundred. Okay. And can you see the time? Zero to one hundred? Uh, no, because I don't have my glasses. But okay. Put it up on the board. Okay, here's the comparison on the leaderboard. Okay, let's zero out the fuel economy now for our towing loops, and there you go. It's funny that it still reads 16.3, I guess because we're sitting here idling. All right, let's hit it. 
Now we've got our 5,000 pounds behind us and we've got a couple things to talk about that have to do with towing and we'll get back to the truck and how it's handling in a second. But first, let me show you this. This is Ram's VIN lookup tool. I love that they have this online. You can see the numbers there for this exact truck. We've got 5,000 pounds behind us and this truck is towing it fine it feels great uh, it's still a half ton you know full frame truck so it's dynamically handling that weight no issue whatsoever i'd even say the 3.6 is pretty well matched to it as well but i'm not driving so tell us what your butt sensors are saying i agree with everything you said uh something i just want to point out for some people it's going to be obvious but you know we're in ontario and Ontario is not exactly flat, but we don't have mountains. So our everyday driving says we're not pulling to the extremes. We don't have long, long grades where we're gonna build a lot of heat and we don't have a long, long downhills where we're gonna burn up our brakes. So when we talk about how we feel with these loads, we can only really tell you based on the roads that we're running and Ontario is for all intents and purposes, relatively flat. Yeah. So, having said that, this engine, my feeling is it's certainly capable of not only this, but a heck of a lot more. Um, maybe I'm not supposed to say that, but I'd be tempted to overload it if that had to happen. And because I know the frame can certainly handle it, and the motor's doing a fine job. And I love the... Uh, trailering package that Ram puts on here. The trailer brake controller works really well. I love the mirrors. They're probably the best in my opinion. They flip up. They also give you a nice high view and just in general that package is going to let you tow pretty much anything that you want. So this has been a, a great experience testing the tradesmen. So this is this is the work truck. This is the fleet truck. However, Ever since trucks got four doors, whether they're full crew cabs or just access cabs or super cabs. This one's the quad cab. They're all different names. The point being is that, yeah, this truck may work Monday to Friday, but because you can get your wife and your kids in here, you are going to use it on the weekend. So that's what I really love about these trucks. So I'm not focused just on, oh, what can I do with it Monday to Friday if I'm a roofer? Um, because on the weekend, I'm going to drag my boat. And I know that I got decent space in here and I've got good capacity so that I can haul my toys, but then Monday morning I can be back on the job. And that's what a work truck is today. It's not like what we had 30 years ago, which truly was just a work truck. Okay, we're done our two fuel economy loops and there you can see it, 15.2 liters per 100 kilometers US. And now you can see Finally, we're back. 15.4 MPG. Okay, everybody. We're gonna do a little off-roading. This is really a family affair. That's my mom driving. And mom's gonna run us through our ruts here. Because I want to see how the anti-spin differential works. So you'll see the passenger's gonna lift and spin. There we go. Whoa! Keep trying. Well, you guys saw it right there. The ruts are a little bit muddy right now, but this differential, keep trying. Keep trying. Well, here's anti-spin differential in action, and you can see this tire with traction is just not getting a lot of power. Although it's also really muddy out here, that is not helping. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Four wheel? Yeah, it's just because it's so muddy. Yeah, four throw high. it in four wheel drive. Four wheel high or low? Four wheel high should be more than enough. Mm -hmm. And it should pop in for you. Okay. okay, give her a try now. All right, that little bit of four wheel drive was all it needed. Yeah, you're good. You can creep right through.
All right, everybody, we're coming to the end of this one. Time to summarize this Ram Tradesman. So I think what you really have to look at here is in this base model truck, Ram really offers everything you need. Heck, we didn't even mention some of the most basic conveniences that are still in this truck. Things like air conditioning, power windows. We just expect them now, so we just glance right over them. But in a base truck, you shouldn't expect any of that, and yet Ram builds it all into the Tradesman. So after looking at this package, I think I'm really coming away with the sense that this truck has everything you need, plus all of those conveniences, and nothing that you don't. So everybody, that's it for this video. Why don't you go below, let us know what you think of this Ram 1500 Tradesman and all our testing. As always, while you're down there, do not forget to hit like, hit that subscribe button, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.